And I think that's the secret to sales success is, is helping other people grow at scale. If you could, if you're focused on other people's success and you help people grow at scale, you'll build a gold mine. This is Outside Sales Talk, the best podcast for outside salespeople. I'm your host, Steve Benson, and we're here to chat with the world's top sales experts so that you can get their best sales tactics to level up your game. Welcome back to Outside Sales Talk. Today, I have John Ferraro with us, and we're going to talk about strengthening relationships through passion, plan, and purpose. Um, John, welcome to the show. Stephen, thank you so much for inviting me for a conversation about uh, really, I think, reaching your dreams. I mean, we all dream and we all want to get there, but how do you do it and how do you do it efficiently? And uh, we're going to talk about some of those things today. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, by way of introduction, uh, early in John's career, he co-founded Goldmine Software Corporation, which I'm sure a lot of you have heard of, um, and was an early pioneer in um, Salesforce automation and also CRM software tools. So um, Goldmine was actually acquired in 99. And today, John is the founder and CEO of Nimble, which is an industry-leading CRM system with contact management solutions for teams and individuals, uh, and has a, a specialization in, in social selling as well. So uh, I guess to jump into the questions here, John, starting at a high level, how can salespeople identify their passions? Well, I think that they naturally come to you. Um, it's, it's really what you end up spending your time doing. And, uh, for me, uh, relationships were a passion of mine. Uh, and I think I got infected by my father who was the number one Lincoln Mercury guy in the country in the fifties. And then had the first Subaru dealership in the seventies in, in California. And, uh, and just watching him interact with people. I think that People buy from people that like, know, and trust. And uh, and if you take the time to be present with another human being, ask them open-ended questions and listen, you'll find a way to uh, add value to that person. And uh, and I found my passion was connecting with other people and, uh, and helping them achieve their dreams. Because uh, as Zig Ziglar said, the more people you help achieve their dreams, the more your dreams that you'll achieve. And so I found my purpose by just being present with myself and listening. And I think that we all resonate towards certain things. And, um, and I think that many people end up in sales selling things that they did because they're knowledgeable about it. And, uh, and they, um, it's easy to sell something that you dig and that you know about. And so uh, anybody selling things that they don't dig shouldn't be selling it. <laughs> says a guy that uh, used to sell accounting software and I don't know the difference between a debit and a credit. <laughs> <laughs> that debit and credit stuff has always confused me too. <laughs> um, what, well, what advice do you have for salespeople who feel like they're struggling to identify their passions? I, I think that... Um, I think that if you truly are connecting with your inner, let's say soul, and you really know um, what you dig and do each day, I don't think you're going to struggle. I think, you know, the thing is, is that what do you get up in the morning and look at on your screen when you're drinking your coffee, <laughs> right? Like, what do you choose to spend your time doing? when you don't have to do whatever you have to do. And I think that's what you're passionate about. I happen to be passionate about astronomy and photography and backpacking and mountain biking. And I could easily be involved in any of those industries. I just have to have fall, fallen into the software industry because I was passionate about that. I bought my first computer when I was uh, 18 years old back in 1978. It was an Apple IIe and um, cost me $3,000. And I was the only person in my city that I think that had a computer. And when I was in, uh, by the time I was in college, I had seven computers in my bedroom. Now, if that wasn't something I was passionate about, then, you know, I was doing the wrong thing. 
So I ended up going down the route of uh, computer science and eventually in sales. And eventually I took that knowledge of computers and sales and turned it into creating software. And I think that the best products come from your own need because you're passionate about it and you understand the problem. And, um, and my problem in those days was I struggled to build relationships at scale and to turn those relationships into revenue. So I invented contact management and CRM before Outlook or Salesforce existed. And I think that's a good example of passions, plan and purpose. And, and there's actually a book that teaches this. I, most people I know who retired at 40 like I did uh, swear by this book. It's called Think and Grow Rich, uh, Napoleon Hill. So if you're struggling as a business person, as a salesperson, as a field salesperson, and you're not quite sure what your passion plan and purpose is, I call it the three P's, then read Think and Grow Rich. And it's a really simple formula. If you can figure out what your passion is, build a plan to achieve it, and then make it a, that your purpose on a daily basis, put it on your refrigerator, put it on your mirror. And every day you get up, you say, what am I doing today to move towards these goals? And if you do that every day, you're going to get there. You're going to get someplace and, uh, and it's going to be a great journey. So uh, I, I'm a firm believer in the three P's of life to keep you focused on uh, growth and, uh, and goals. Fantastic advice. And uh, there, it's so much, so much there I agree with. And the, you know, one, one thing that really jumped out at me that you said was the salespeople shouldn't sell things that they don't truly believe in. And if, and, and I, I feel like the, to be a successful salesperson, that's so true. If you, if you don't believe in the product, if you know the, the competitors are better, it's really hard to be a successful salesperson. That's, and and I'd, I'd recommend just switching to a different product, different company, because the, the, it comes through in your voice if you don't believe in something and it, and it really <laughs> makes it much harder to sell. It, it really does. It really does. Um, and I've, I've, sell, I've, I've sold things that were the best in, in class and I've sold things that were kind of average and I've sold things that weren't as great. And I, looking back, it was the, whole, the, the periods where I was selling something that weren't as great. It, it's just, it's a waste of everybody's time, I think. Um, but uh, it's, it's much cooler to be working on things that are the best in, in their class and really make a difference for people. And that you dig. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so are, is there any way that salespeople can align their passions um, with what they're doing or, or I guess, which comes first, the, the passion or the, the, uh, the, the thing that you're, the thing that you're doing to, uh, to plan and the purpose to, to, to get to that I, passion. I really firmly believe it's the passion has to come first and then comes the plan and then you make it your purpose. Because um, if you're not doing what you dig every day, why are you on this planet? Um, and, uh, and I think ideally your passion is aligned with a higher purpose a year after selling uh, my last company, uh, Goldmine, I got a head tumor and, uh, and almost died. And so <laughs> it really sucked. Uh, so there I was, I sold Goldmine for cash. We didn't have any investors. Uh, we, we basically bootstrapped it and got it to over $100 million in revenue. So we sold it for quite a bit of money. And, uh, and I got a head tumor. And just the same time my second baby was born, I said, damn. And so in the process of getting healed, I did some spiritual work and I came to the conclusion my purpose on this planet is to grow my soul in the brief period of time I'm here. And the best way to do that is by being present with other people and, uh, and helping them grow their soul. And so I think that my purpose on this planet is to help grow other, my, help grow myself, to grow myself and do that best by helping other people grow. And I think that if you apply that concept to the sales process. I think too many salespeople are out there with their purpose is to bag and tag as many customers as they can to make as much money as they can. And while, you know, that is a, 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 a it's an okay goal, but I believe that if you change the goal around, rather than trying to sell people, you try to serve them to help them grow. If you entered into every sales relationship with the intent to help that person be better, smarter, faster, then you can't help but grow. And so 
I think that uh, when you think about what is my passion in, in life, I think that uh, if you can figure out a way to align it to a serving others, helping other people grow, then you can't help but grow in this world. And I think that service is truly the new sales. Could not agree more. And how do you think that you can leverage that philosophy that and leverage leverage your passion to build better sales relationships? Well, I think that uh, one of the big problems with many sales relationships is that salespeople don't really take the time to understand the prospect uh, or their business. Uh, to build a, uh, a relationship where there's some decent intimacy and trust where that person opens up to you about their business issues, which is a profession you can then solve. And, uh, and they essentially enter into every sales opportunity with the same stick, if you will. They get in there and they just start pitching. They don't listen to the customer. They don't, they don't try to figure out what the business is or what their problems are. They just pitch. And, and it just totally turns people off. Stop talking about your product. Stop talking about yourself. People don't buy great products. They buy better versions of themselves. So when you enter into a sales opportunity, I think the best thing that you could do is to prepare before the meeting, to try to understand who that person is and what their business is about, uh, possibly figure out what that person's five outs uh, of life are. What, what, what are their, where can you connect on their five outs of life? And those are family, friend, food, fun, and fellowship. In the old days, I used to teach people, when you go in people's office, look at their walls, look at the books they read, the degree of the school they went to, the knickknacks they collect. All these things are areas of commonality that you can then connect with them on to get them to uh, develop some sense of intimacy and trust, to get them to open up to you about their business issues, which as a professional, you can then solve. And so... I think that uh, I think that one of the key problems that salespeople have is they're just too busy selling and they're not listening and they're not addressing their customers' needs and uh, and then maintaining top of mind. And the best way for a salesperson to maintain top of mind with a prospect or a customer is to become their trusted advisor. And the easiest way to do that is to give your knowledge away. Most salespeople know more about their products and services than their customers will ever know in their lives. And if they just gave their knowledge away about how they might help that customer become better, smarter, faster, they won't be seen as a salesperson anymore. They'll be seen as a trusted advisor. And when that customer, when that prospect needs their products and services, they'll not only pick up the phone and call them, but they'll drag their friends with them. And that's a secret to uh, really building a pipeline that's unstoppable. And tell me about, have you, uh, a lot of what you're saying, I, I suspect has ended up in nimble. Have you used this philosophy that you're, that you're talking about right now for, for building nimble? Yeah. Yeah. And, and so if you think about a traditional CRM, uh, which by the way, very few businesses in the world use, there's 225 million global businesses, less than 1% use any CRM. Most people CRM is a spreadsheet, their contact platform and Office or G Suite and social uh, or post-it notes. And so, um, and so the reason why CRMs fail is lack of use. The reason they call it Salesforce, you have to force salespeople to use it. Why do people <laughs> not like to use a CRM? Because you work for it, it doesn't work for you. Before a meeting, if you really want to be prepared, you have to Google people and then you got to type that shit in the computer. And then you engage and in, where do you engage? You engage in an email, you engage in social, you engage face-to-face, -face, and then you got to go back and type that stuff in the CRM. And salespeople don't like to type data. And so I believe that your CRM should work for you by building itself, by automatically synchronizing all the contacts that you engage with on email, calendar, or social, um, in any business apps that you use, nimble bi-directional synchronizer with 300 SaaS business apps, and then works back where you work on your mobile if you're out in the field or inside your email inbox or inside your Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever apps that you're using so that before you connect with somebody, you can bring up Nimble and it tells you who is this person? Who last connected with them? What did they talk about? Who's going to connect with them? What, what are they planning on doing? What's going on with that person's business? And then the most important thing 
the follow-up because most business fails because we don't do the basics is the follow-up and that's the ability to log a note, schedule a task, whatever. And so the nimble is really designed more for the field sales person or the customer facing business team member, as opposed to management who's more concerned about reporting and command and control of that salesperson. But the salesperson is really more interested in the engagement aspect. And funny thing, CRM stands for customer relationship management. The reality is it stands for customer reporting management because most CRMs are built for sales managers or sales owners uh, as opposed to the sales rep. And that's why sales reps have to go out and buy all these SFA and contact tools like SalesLoft or Outreach.io for templated email tracking or Discover Org or LinkedIn Sales Navigator for contact enrichment. And, um, and I think that the modern CRM really needs to be more focused on the needs of the sales rep, which is actually where Salesforce started. If you Google Wayback Machine 1999 Salesforce, you'll find the page, which is the original page Mark Danioff built and in 1999. And it's all about serving the needs of the salesperson, but they've forgotten about the salesperson. They really serve the needs for managers. And I built Nimble to power salespeople, not that it doesn't have basic CRM features like reporting and privacy and pipeline and all that stuff, but really you need to build a relationship and a connection before you could ever put anything in the pipeline and run reports on it. So the best aspects of a CRM are the contact management features and the Salesforce automation features, which is where we shine. And you know, I I uh, I, I completely agree with you. The and, and you know, I feel like I, I see why, and, I, and I've experienced this a million times. Why it's so hard for organizations to have successful CRM rollouts. Um, but it, it's it, it was it was such an interesting stat you just brought up that that less than one percent of of businesses use a CRM. I understand why. You know, it's more of a reporting tool, and so salespeople avoid using it, which you know ruins a lot of rollouts. But why would you? I mean, less than one percent. Why would you say? What are the major reasons that companies hesitate to use CRMs? Well, the ones that have implemented a CRM, they they buy it because they think that they need it because everybody else is doing it, and they they don't think about what the inputs and outputs are. And basically, a CRM is a box, right? You put things in and you want to get things out of it, but people don't take the time to really define what that is. And then they, they, they roll it out and they give it to the reps. They don't give them proper training and they really don't say what's in it for them because human beings do things that they benefit from. And so uh, you give it to the sales rep and they feel like it's a burden. It's a chain around their neck that they got to go type this stuff in. And most salespeople go type the stuff in the CRM the night before the reports are run. So they don't get in trouble, but they, they don't live in the CRM. They live in their inbox. They live in social. They live in front of the customer and, uh, and, and they go to the CRM to feed the beast. And so I think that the reason why there's 225 million global businesses and less than 1% use the CRM is because sales reps have to work for the CRMs. The CRMs don't work for them, but automatically building and keeping records up to date. And they have to go to the CRM to use it as opposed to the CRM being plugged into their email, plugged into their browser, plugged into the business apps that they're using and making, saving them time. Because if I want to build a record for somebody, I don't have to Google them and they're going to cut and paste all that data and put it into the record. I'm not a data entry person. I'm a relationship person and I'm here to solve customers' needs. So the computer should do the work for me and it should work with me wherever I'm engaging. Well, yeah, that makes perfect sense. I, I think all salespeople really need to be relationship people. Uh, how would you say that salespeople can use their CRM to develop stronger relationships? Well, I think if you talk about a traditional CRM, I think it's hard because it's just a database and it only has what you type in there and the data decays so rapidly because people change and companies change. Um, but if you are using a traditional CRM, I think you need to do the basics. You need to put in the core information that you need so that when you connect with that person again, you can catch up and keep going where you left off. 
And the basic stuff is what did they say? What did I say? What are their needs? What's the next step? When do I got to do it? And, and it's really simple stuff is scheduling X action and then following up and following through. And I think it's the basics that wins games. And I think that most salespeople don't do the basics because it's too much work. But if salespeople want to be truly successful, they need to focus on listening to the customer and less time doing data entry. And, uh, and I think that's the secret. And then the follow-up. So listen to the customer, determine a way to add value, follow up on what you say you're going to do, and, uh, and stay top of mind by becoming a trusted advisor. I think any sales rep that, re that relies on the leads that marketing gives them is going to fail because uh, you need to be building your own brand and your own network and going out and nurturing your existing customers, your prospective customers, and most importantly, the influencers of your customers. Those are probably the most important people that any salesperson can connect to. And I'll give you an example. If I was calling on small businesses, rather than calling the small business, which is, you know, there's probably like billions of them, I would contact their trusted advisor, the person that advises them on who, what products to buy or, or like their accountant or their technology advisor or their lawyer. These are the trusted advisors of small businesses. And so if you want to be successful in sales, you can't rely on marketing leads and you can't uh, rely on just contacting prospects and customers, you need to determine who the influencer of your prospect is and find a way to become a value add to them and, uh, and get them to be telling your story for you and bringing you into the customers. Yeah, no, I, I, I could not agree more. What on the flip side, what's, uh, what are some of the mistakes that you've seen salespeople make when they're developing relationships with their clients? Well, I, I think that you can go too far and, uh, and just become too familiar too quick. Just because you go on somebody's Facebook and you see some thing about that person, you want to immediately jump there. That's, it's kind of like, ooh, and icky. Um, and then the other thing is is, 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 is spending too much time talking about yourself or your products. Like I said, nobody cares. People don't buy great products that buy better versions themselves. And the only way you're going to be able to learn how to sell somebody a better version of themselves is to get to know who that person is and what their business is about and what their needs are. And so if you get to know a person, then you can find some areas of commonality. And if you knew me, you'd know that I was into astronomy, mountain biking and cooking and my family. And I'm sure we'd find a, a way to connect on that. Again, the five F's of life, family, friend, food, fun and fellowship. And once we have some intimacy and trust, then ask me some open-ended questions and then shut up and listen. Because if you listen, customers will tell you uh, how you can help them. And if for some reason, your products and services may not help that person, the best thing you could do is recommend a competitor. Because if you do help that person, even if they don't buy from you that day, they're gonna remember you and they're gonna refer you. And, uh, and that's the best way to help a customer grow is to enter into a relationship, not with the intent to close them and make as much money as you can, but to serve them and help that person achieve their goals and their dreams and you'll achieve yours. Well, the next section of the show is sales in 60 seconds, quick questions, quick answers. So first question I've got for you, John, um, what is a piece of advice about building relationships that you would give yourself early in your career? Well, I think that uh, I tell myself that relationships, most of the energy in, in creating a relationship happens in the beginning of the relationship, just like a rocket ship or a car. So to get a rocket ship out into orbit or to space, most of the energy or fuel is on takeoff. To get a car up to 60 miles an hour, most of the fuel is getting the car to 60. But keeping it at uh, in orbit or at 60 takes very little effort, but it does take some. And so if you've taken the time to initiate a relationship with somebody that you've determined is important to you in your life, then what you want to make sure is that you go back in and you nurture those relationships over time. You don't let them become stale and that you continually go and nudge that plate. 
Have you ever been to a carnival where you see that person with the plate on the pencil and they're spinning the plates on the pencils? You know, the hard part is getting the plate spinning. But basically, all it takes to keep it spinning is a little nudge now and then. So don't forget about your customers. Don't forget about your uh, prospects. Don't forget about your uh, customers, influencers. Reach out and connect with them periodically. And the best way to connect with another human is not to go send them a, a quarterly newsletter that tells them how great your products are, but walk in their digital footprint and add value to them. You know, just let them know that you see them. And, uh, and the best way is really uh, sharing your expertise. Um, and so if anybody's listening to this today, what I would do if I was you and I was a sales rep is when I'm drinking my coffee and I'm reading whatever I read because I'm passionate about what I sell and I do, I'd begin to, uh, I'd put an avatar, I'd create an identity in all the places where my customers have conversations to learn and grow. And then I'd, I'd put a nice avatar and some nice words up there so I have an identity. And then I'd share content every morning. And then in the afternoon, I'd go check to see people engaging it. And I'd go and connect and, and engage those people. And if you do that religiously every day, uh, it's not going to take you more than, say, 30 minutes, 45 minutes a day to do that. But over time, you'll develop tens of thousands of connections and, and contacts. And that's your, that's your garden. That's your, that's, your, uh, that's your virtual garden that you need to surround yourself with people that can help you achieve your dreams in life. And that's your network and your brand. And that's the most critical thing that any human being has today. Uh, who's involved in business or selling. Makes a ton of sense. What, conversely, what holds people back from building great relationships and sales? Uh, I think they're too into themselves and they're not really into serving others. I think that, uh, I think that we become a bit of the me generation as opposed to the we generation. And I think that we need to think more about the we than the me. Um, and, uh, and I think social media is really forcing that. I think that there's a period of time where the enterprise Oracle bag and tag, um, uh, salesperson was the de rigueur. And I think that, uh, that, uh, sales became a four letter word and, uh, and people were into just closing more deals. And I think that rather than commissioning sales reps on the close, you should commission the whole team on the uh, keep, on the retention. And so rather than closing, commissioning on a closing a deal, I think that you should reward the whole team in the pre and post sales implementation on, uh, on retention as opposed to closing. Really interesting. And what are some of the most valuable skill sets that really successful salespeople have? would you say? Well, you know, listening is really important, but organizational skills, um, because uh, I think it's easy to get overwhelmed in, uh, in a pile of leads or a pile of customers or, uh, or in the basics. It's, it's, it's the basic follow-up and follow through. I think that if you don't have a system for managing contacts and uh, managing your tasks and your notes, and managing your pipeline, then you're not going to be successful in uh, in sales, and and you shouldn't think about that system just for prospects and customers. So at Nimble, we connect to more than prospects and customers. To grow our startup, we've had to connect to editors, analysts, bloggers, influencers, third-party developers, investors, advisors, and prospects and customers. I call that the constituency, and uh, and so. My Nimble database is much more than prospects and customers. It's the whole constituency that sustainable garden that we've surrounded our company with that helps us achieve our dreams. And if you think about the company doing that, any person needs to do that, especially salespeople. And so you need a system and um, you need to use it effectively and need to love the system. I mean, people, you had to rip goldmine out of people, sales reps hands when you tried to force them to use Siebel and Salesforce. And, um, and I think that any sales rep listening to this today should have their own personal CRM, even if they do are forced to use some conventional CRM at the office. 
Yeah, that, that makes a tremendous amount of sense to me. I, I always kind of have kept things separate in that regard, per, you know, different personal relationships and professional relationships. Um, do, do you have a, a favorite sales book that's helped shaped your, your thinking? And if, if so, what, uh, what lessons did you take away from that book? Well, you know, I, I, uh, I remember when I first got into sales, I, uh, I bought uh, Dale Carnegie's uh, Win Friends and, and Influence People. And, and I really believe that uh, the basics of sales and business have been given away uh, over time and that the greats are still great today. You know, there's a lot of people out there teaching social selling and social serum and this and that. But the reality is that business has always been social. People buy from people they like, know, and trust. And, uh, and I think that, uh, that greats like Zig Ziglar uh, and Dale Carnegie um, really, you know, they're still, they still resonate today. And one of the things that Zig Ziglar says is that you can, you can, you can get any dream you want by helping other people achieve, uh, get their dreams, roughly speaking. And I think that's the secret to sales success is, is helping other people grow at scale. If you could, if you're focused on other people's success and you help people grow at scale, you'll build a gold mine. I know I did. <laughs> I love it. Um, as an actionable takeaway, what should the salespeople listen to today do as a first step to building more and deeper trust with their clients? Well, I think that changing the mindset is, is critical. Um, I think I've been saying this throughout the entire conversation is I think that sales has become a four letter word. I think the service is the new sales and, uh, and, and actually there's a book, uh, that talks about this. It's, uh, it's the new rules of, uh, sales and service by David Merriman Scott. And he talks about the evolution of the customer journey and how sales reps have to evolve with it. Uh, in the old days, marketing people used to blast out messages to drive uh, customers into sales reps' arms so they could bag them and tag them. And, and now the customers, uh, they, they don't want to read our marketing material. They don't want to talk to our sales reps. Uh, they're doing their own homework. And when they are ready to talk, they don't want to be sold. Uh, and so I think that uh, the, the best thing that you could do as a sales rep for future success is to change your mindset that you're there to serve customers, not to sell them. And then after that, build some type of organizational system around your process. Uh, and, and I'll just leave you with an example. One of the first things I saw as a sales rep way back in the day uh, wasn't the Rolodex. It was the six by nine index card system. And the way it worked is that you take an index uh, six by nine index card and before you talk to a customer, you write down their basic information. And then while you're on the phone with them, you write some notes. And then you, uh, when you're done with the call, you put in the next step and the recall date, your follow-up date. And then you file that card on that recall date. And then on that date, you make those calls. In addition to that, you call some new people. And so it, any system, even if it's a paper-based system, is going to be great. But you need to have a system and a process. You need to work that system. And if you do that uh, well, uh, you'll have great success. Yeah, I, I, I always did a, a process very similar to what you're talking about, but in an Excel spreadsheet back, uh, back in my early days as a salesperson before we had all the marvelous tools that we have today. Well, I'm going to attempt to summarize all the stuff that you've taught us today, John. Um, First of all, John recommends people find a career where you love what you sell so that you can be passionate about what you do. Um, you want to think about what interests you have and, and what needs you have and see if you can find a job that aligns with those, those interests and needs, with those passions. Build a to-do list that moves you toward the goal that aligns with your passion. Um, and, and that was what John was talking about with the, with the three P's. So I, anyway, you want to identify your passion first before you decide your, uh, your purpose. And, uh, and I guess you, 
you have to build a plan to, uh, you know, to, to do that. You want to see if you can help people with the thing that you're passionate about in what you sell. And that's, that's really a key that that shows through in the sales process, that, that passion that you have for what you're selling. Take time to understand your prospect and their service, their business, their, their product before you meet with them. Be an expert in, in, in what they do. And then use the five Fs. See how you can connect over friends, family, food, fun, and fellowship. You want to become a trusted advisor with your, with your prospects, with your customers. Salespeople need to share their knowledge on how they can help that prospect be better, smarter, faster, however you can help them. Salespeople should also use their CRM to keep track of important customer information and also schedule follow-ups and, and know, uh, and ultimately that's a lot of what customer relationship management is about. Finally, you need to take time to listen. Customers will often share how salespeople can help them if you're listening. Some really great advice here today, John. Tell me, where where can listeners read more about your work? How, how can they get a hold of you, reach out to you? What's the best way to connect? Well, this is actually, uh, Stephen, another tip that I have for any salesperson listening. Your, your prospects are going to Google you. So if you want to find out uh, how to connect with me, and I encourage you to connect on whatever channel is most comfortable for you. Google me, John, J-O-N space F-E-R-R-A-R-A. And, um, and in fact, Google yourself and see if you show up on the first page and how much of yourself shows up on the first page. And if you don't show up on the first page, here's a tip for you to show up better. Build a Wikipedia page for yourself. It's free. It's easy. You just have to do it right. You have to cite articles, uh, cite whatever you're writing about yourself, cite the notations, external citations uh, for that. But when you put your own avatar in there and, and that background information, when people Google you, that's going to show up on the main first page. And so you can control how people see you and, uh, and your customers, your prospects, they're going to Google you. So if you want to be successful with your brand and your network, uh, you should be building identities and sharing content and uh, making sure that you show up when they Google you. So Google me, you'll find that I'm in all the usual places or I'll make it easy for you. My email is jon at nimble.com. Email me, let me know how I can help you grow. And, um, and, and if you have an interest in your own brand and network and uh, building relationships that'll help you achieve your dreams in life, Go check out Nimble, nimble.com. And if you like what you see and you want to use it, um, I'll save you 40% off your first three months. Use the code JON40 when you subscribe and uh, we'll save you a little money. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, I only have one problem with the Google advice that you give about uh, when you Google me, it turns out there's a, a famous serial killer who, uh, who comes up. So he's... Uh, He's not alive, so no one confuses me with him. And he, we, we look we look pretty different. But uh, but yeah, the uh, Steve Benson on Google doesn't doesn't work well for me. You got to combine is, is it that with the like guy from Merced. Um, I don't know where he was from. He but I, he was like a wealthy. He was supposed to inherit a bunch of money, but he didn't want to wait, and so he killed his mom and brother, which was oh, uh, that that's yeah. not that's not the wrong thing. Though. <laughs> Pretty, well, pretty. It was, it was a national case. Pretty, uh, pretty famous, but very rude thing to do. Kill your mom and brothers. So you can get your inheritance sooner. That wasn't me. That was somebody else. <laughs> but uh, anyway, this has been a great episode of the Outside Sales Talk. John, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, to join us and, and 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 bestow your wisdom upon us. This is fantastic. You bet, Stephen. Uh, I, I love having conversations uh, to share wisdom, to help people achieve their dreams. It's part of my philosophy. Uh, and so I appreciate the opportunity to have the chat. Well, fantastic. And for anybody that is uh, works in field sales, check out Badger Maps, number one route planner, uh, sell 20% more, drive 20% less, and we have a free trial at badgermapping.com. If anyone can think of any other sales reps out there that would benefit from learning the stuff that 
that John's been telling us about today. Forward this episode on to him. Take care until next time, everybody. Bye.